Okay, in this video we're going to talk about adding some more code to our script to make it do more things. And we're going to specifically talk about getting it to, to run some code if one of our conditions, uh, to run some code um, after we, we ask the user some questions. So I've, I've made a copy of pizza, called it pizza2, and I put some code in here. So basically, if the, if the I want to know what the user's favorite topping is. So I'm going to ask the user the que initial question. I went ahead and implemented my lowercase uh, comparisons because that seemed like a more sophisticated solution that would give me better results uh, in the pizza script. So I'm going to ask him, what's your favorite topping? I'm going to read the topping. I'm going to get it in lowercase. And then I'm going to compare it to some, some known toppings. So I'm going to say, hey, if you like pepperoni, I like that. Pineapple, yeah. Vegetables, yuck. Canadian bacon. And then down here, I have an else to say, that sounds terrible on pizza. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and, and run this and see if it works. So pizza two, do you like pizza? Yes. What is your favorite topping? Pepperoni. That's my favorite too. Do you like pizza? Capital yes. What's your favorite topping? Vegetables. Did I spell out vegetables? Yuck. Yeah. And then finally, we'll go ahead and exercise. Do you like pizza? What's your favorite topping? Water. Everybody loves the water pizza. Okay, that sounds terrible on pizza. So the script seems to be working properly based on the input I've exercised, but what happens if I don't like pizza? Do you like pizza? No. If you don't like pizza, we can no longer be friends. What is your favorite topping? What? That makes no sense. Why would I ask somebody what their favorite topping is if they don't like pizza? So if I go in the script and if I look at the script flow, I ask if you like pizza, I say, great. I ask you like pizza, if you say no, I say you don't like pizza, but then if I keep going down, the code is still gonna hit hit this topping code, which if somebody doesn't like pizza, I don't wanna ask them about their topping. Also, if, if they don't answer yes or no, I still ask them about their favorite topping. So clearly, that code doesn't need to run in those cases. So there's a couple ways we can fix it. The, the easiest way is after you determine they don't like pizza, you can exit. That's legit. Once you know you don't want to run anymore, once you know, oh, the script is done for this guy, you can exit the code. Exit the code and then it'll run as expected. So do you like pizza? No. Do you like pizza? We can no longer be friends. So that worked. However, I would like to argue and, and point out that a better solution would be to move this code up to where it's inside this if statement for the yes. So what I mean is, is we want to put the topping code here right so if we put the topping code there it's only going to run if they like pizza and then it's going to run the no code if they don't like pizza and it's going to run the else code if they didn't answer so we wouldn't need these exits save you the pain of having to watch me type i've already done that in my original pizza script so in this case now i have if pizza answer lc equals yes you do like pizza great me too and then we want to print what is your favorite topping retopping, get it in lowercase, and then we'll do these comparisons, right? And this is only gonna happen if they like pizza. So if we look at our block of code, this block of code runs if they like pizza, this block of code runs if they don't like pizza, and this block of code runs if they didn't answer yes or no. So I, I would like to, to recommend that this is a better way to do it because your code for if they like pizza is right after you find out if they like pizza. If you're writing a big script and you have your code uh, all all moved around in weird places, uh, then then it wouldn't work the way I originally had it too well. And there also there might be times when we want to keep the code running after we get done with this part of the code. After, for example, maybe maybe we want to enhance our code to ask if they like steak after we get done finding about their pizza choices. If we want to find out about steak after we find out about pizza, we can't put an exit here because we still want the rest of the code to run, even if they don't like pizza. So uh, let's, let's go exercise this because there's a couple other things I want to point out at this point. So if we do pizza, do you like pizza? Yes. What's your favorite time? Pepperoni. That's my favorite too. Do you like pizza? No. It exits that expected. Do you like pizza? You didn't answer yes or no. Eggs is that as expected. Do you like pizza? Yes. Water. That sounds terrible on pizza. So a couple other things we'll, we'll add to enhance the script a little bit. One, we'll go ahead and use our variable down here. Right? 
So we can make it more personalized. We can put use dollar topping instead of that. So we can make it say dollar topping LC. Sounds terrible on pizza. So now if we go run the script, yes, water. Now it, it actually tells us something that we put in, which makes it work a little better, or a, a better user experience, I guess I'll say. And then the other thing we're gonna do is there's something I, I left out intentionally on purpose so that we could cover it later after you've already kind of touched on, script, on the comparisons a little bit, and that is uh, what happens if we have white space in our answer. So do you like pizza? Yes. What's your favorite topping? One of my choppings was Canadian bacon, right? And if we look, we get an error. This is too many arguments, right? And the reason we get that error is because we did not protect our, our variables. And what do I mean by protect our variables? In our comparisons, we did not enclose our variables in double quotes. We almost all, I screwed that up. We almost always want our variables to be inside double quotes. Double quotes protects white space from, uh, protects the variable from white space. So if you have white space in there, it gets protected from the shell, so it actually works properly. And it also protects if we don't enter anything. So, uh, for example, here I'm not going to save that change at this point. So, so if I run it again and I don't answer anything, right, Having a, a code that generates errors is, is not a good solution. So we'll, we'll go ahead and put some double quotes in there. We'll put some double quotes in. We'll just do the main question first to see that we can fix it by protecting our variables from the shell with double quotes. So now if I don't, oh yeah, I need to, uh, is that going to work? Line nine, yeah, that's not what I wanted. So now I think if it if I run it, it, it runs without error, which is what we want pretty much in all cases. So I'm gonna go down here. We, we wanna do this all the time. We always want to protect our variables with double quotes. So I'll go ahead and fix them all, which even though I said I didn't want you guys watching me type, you can watch, uh, watch me type a little bit. All right, so in our comparisons, we want to always have our variables in double quotes, All right? So that's, that's that. So now with the double quotes around that, the Canadian bacon choice should work. Yes, I like pizza, Canadian bacon. You mean ham? So there, so that, that, that solved that issue. So if we go back and look at the script, that's not looking at the script. If we go back and look at the script, we, things we learned in this, this video, we want the code to be close to where it should run. So even though it was possible, I put the code down here in my first example, and it worked okay after I put some X's in, it's much better to have your code up where it needs to run. Um, yeah. So And then, and then we always want to put our, our variables in double quotes because it protects the white space. And if we have white, unexpected white space or even empty variables, that causes errors in our scripts if we don't have the quotes. So that is what we wanted to learn in this video.